Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today, we're going to take an average 2x6, and this is a 2x6, 8 foot long white wood. It cost me just under $4. I'm going to turn it into a tabletop like this and make it look antiqued. Before we get started on this, I'd like to clarify a couple of things. I've had some followers of mine send me comments stating that they thought maybe I'm selling out to, to the companies, and I'm not. Uh, I am not a billboard for anybody. What I will do is take a product that someone sends me and check it out. If I like this product and I feel like it's a good product for you guys, I'm going to show it and I'll let you know what my feelings are on it. Here's an example of one of the tools that I really like and that I would like to show to you guys. It's called the Pegasus by Works and I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with it. They sent me two of them. I'm going to show you how it works at the end of this video and I'm going to give away one of them. So drop a comment below and I'm going to pick out of the first hundred comments in there and give one of these away. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about this tool. It doesn't matter. If you don't mind, also hit like for me and we're going to get started on this video. We're going for that rustic look so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want a really good board. You don't want to have a board that has curves in it and this is a way to check it. You take your eye and you set it right on the edge of the board and you look down it. If you see it having waves or if you see that it turns this way, take it and throw it on the side. Look at both sides of this, okay? Top and bottom. That way you can make sure to get the straightest board possible. Because even though you're going for a rustic look, you want a pretty tight fit on here when you glue them together. We're going to take this right here, and this is one that I cut, and I'm going to show you how we get it ready. The two end ones, I only have four boards for this. This end one right here, I'm going to leave natural. It doesn't matter. This side right here, I'm going to skim a, an, an edge off of it. Now my two inside boards, this one and this one, I'll have to have perfect on both sides so when I glue it, I really won't see the seam. That's if you're going for this type of look. So this one will have one cut and my other end one will have one cut and my two centers will, will have two cuts, one on each side. I got my mask and my eye protection. See, I just took a shaving off of there, real thin. Now I'm going to take it and flip it and do the same on this side. So let me unplug it. Now we'll scoot it over just a little bit. I've been playing around with this sawhorse for a little while now, and here's my brand new one. So I'm going to pull this one out and show you how easy it is to work with. It weighs about 30 pounds. It's pretty stout. And we'll get into the specs of it after. But right now, I just want to set it up. So easy to set up. All I have to do is pull it out and it locks in place. Now, if I want this to go down, I'll press my two buttons. It's going to lock down because I want it down for this reason. You can put sacrificial 2x4s in here and, and have a sawhorse to set across. This will hold 1,000 pounds. So it's really strong. Drop this down, pull it out, I'm going to take and put boards across here where I can pull this out and get as many sides as possible to work on at one time. It all depends on the look you're going for. You can make a bunch of waves or you can kind of go in and out. You just don't want to go past a certain area. So you'll want to draw a line and that's where you want to stop at. So I'll take my finger and hold it. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is not rocket science, so you can always come back and hit some spots after, but we'll, we'll get these edges to where they look right after. We're going to take this on an angle and chip some of this out.
This is a spider blade, and I really like it a lot because it has teeth on the front and back, which allows you to turn back and forth because the back teeth are cutting as well as the front. And uh, it, it always works a lot better if you have it in this position where it kicks forward if you have a saw that does that. I love this saw. The only thing I don't like is the fact that this bearing got loose, but I use it a lot. This is only going to take a minute. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to knock off the edges. I'm not going to take the chain and sling on it, I'll just hammer it. That will leave little marks in here. I use the back of the hammer to get some deeper marks. These will leave a little bit shallower marks. You hit it in a couple of spots like that, if a chip comes off, then great. That's fine. You just don't want a chunk coming out of it. A lot of times on white wood, I will use a torch and I'll burn these edges. But when you're using treated wood, never use a torch. It's really dangerous. The carcinogens that come out of here are really bad and it's bad in the ash too. So don't wear a respirator and try to uh, burn it and then use it. I wouldn't want that in my house. On the treated wood, like this one is, I just took some black stain and I rubbed it in there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But uh, as a fireman, I'm telling you, it's very dangerous to burn uh, treated wood, so don't do that. I'm using a Benzomatic TS-4000, and you just pull the trigger, it comes on, you let it go, and it goes off. And I'll just take and burn the edge of this. You could burn it really good if you want, let it, let it get good and black. You can kind of feather it into there on some of the grain. I'll hit these edges real good first. You can make some of it look really charred if you want. I wanted to darken up that knot some. You can make those come out a little bit more by darkening them up. If you burn it too much, you can always sand some of that off and you're fine. So don't sweat it. You can always fix it, it's wood. Unless you burn the whole thing. If you're gonna play with a torch, be real careful when you do it. You don't want to uh, burn anything else or burn yourself, so be real careful with these. All right, I'm going to take stain and put on that. It's going to give me the exact look that this gives me, but uh, it'll give you a really good look. And like I said, it's perfect for when you're using treated wood. Or if I did black stain around the whole thing, It's always a good idea to put some uh, mineral spirits on your rag too first. And you see now, I'll rub this out and you'll see it'll get darker and lighter. I'm leaving these, some of these dark spots. I'll rub out the other ones real good with the turpentine and it kind of brings them out. Let's see, we'll blend this into here and you'll see what I'm talking about. It looks more realistic. Look in the description box and I'll show you what materials I use as well as uh, uh, the links to the, the different tools that I may use.
I didn't sand the bottom. I could if I wanted to, and it'd only take a couple of minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and just seal it. That way it's protected. This is an indoor uh, tabletop anyway. It's a work table, so I'm not concerned about it, but I'm going to go ahead and cover the bottom. I like to do the whole thing when I do it. This is the side that I stained, and this is the side that I burned. All of these three sides. So you can match that if you want. It's a lot safer than burning it. Um, you just take the stain and rub in there. Well, you see how easy that was, and it came out really cool. This is going to be a nice little uh, work table, but I could make this a little end table or coffee table or whatever I want, and it only cost me $4 for this top. Now I want to show you a little bit about these sawhorses. So let me get this out the way. When I first looked at these clamps, I thought, well, this isn't the best part of this table. But they are pretty darn good. They adjust in all kind of ways, and they're a lot stronger than I thought they were. So you would take this the way it's designed, slide it in the track. Once you slip that in, you squeeze your trigger, and you lock this down. Now you have a clamp that you can adjust and lock on to any, any position you want from here. The only thing I didn't like, the clamp does not extend past the table, but if it did that, you wouldn't be able to put them in position and, and have them out of the way. They would be sticking out when this is folded up. I thought it was a design flaw at first, but uh, I realized quickly that, that you had to have it like that. If I have a board right here that I need a clamp, and I, I need to clamp it to this other board, I'll set them both in place. Slip this down and lock them tight. And that holds it super tight. And you can see, I can pick up this table easily with it. Underneath the table, you have four dogs. So you take this, you pull them out, and you can put them in the holes up top. Once you set these in the holes, you can take a block of wood or something irregular if it's round, and you move your peg holes in different spots, and you can bite on it. I can take these and turn them different ways. If I want to pull it back to here, all I do is that and I can clamp it. I can take the other two dogs if I want and put on this side, and if I have a really long board, I can release this, hang it way out, and put it right there and bite it with both clamps. And then I, I can make my cuts off of this board. These little tabs right here, they will enable you to connect two different sawhorses. So I'm going to put them on this side right here, and I can make one big table. And you have these notches on all four sides. I'll slip my tables right together, and put this here, and it's going to keep them together. Now I have one big table, and I can just keep adding on to it when I want. If I want to lock another table on, I can take my other two tabs and put on the sides here and go this way and make an L. Don't do this at home, but you can see that these things are solid. Well, that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out PaulsToolbox.com for all my archive videos. Make sure you put a comment down below because I'm going to pick from the first 100 people that comment on this. And I will see you on the next project.